Go. I want to welcome everybody to May, and it is ALS Awareness Month. And over the course of the month of May and through uh, Global ALS Day on June 21st, we will be making presentations, but we wanted to kick the month off or kick this awareness program off, telling you a little bit about the foundation. Um, we, we want to let you know what we've been doing for the last few years through COVID and now that things are opening up a little bit to show you that we're still making progress. And it really is thanks to everyone out there who supports us. Uh, we uh, have an active board of directors and um, we've uh, recently added uh, Gary Curtis, but uh, all of our previous board members remain. Uh, uh, Larry Corrigan, Mike McCool, Mary uh, Abood, Ron Patterson, Gary Romano, Gary Curtis, Deb uh, Santarpio Stanfa, and Mary Kay Turner. And they've been really uh, supportive over this difficult period. And we are really proud that we've now added PALS to our uh, board, basically as an advisory board. And uh, our three uh, PALS at this point are Stacy Farber, Todd Kelly, and Will Stuber. And and uh, their job is to keep us honest and true to our mission, which is really to make a difference to people living with ALS. And if anyone out there who's a pal would uh, be interested, please let us know. All voices need to be heard. We feel, an ob we feel it's really important to, to pay attention to what pals think is important. And of course, we have a great staff Jamie Piggott, who I think everybody knows is our executive director, and he has just been terrific over the last two years and helped us to really, really grow. Sarah Addix is our director of development and events, and Sarah also came on board about a year and a half ago and has been doing a great job. Uh, Paul Schiller does our finances. And of course, uh, what can I say, our clinical liaison, Sarah Feldman, 20 years, Sarah, 22 years uh, since we've been in existence, Sarah has been there uh, really making a huge difference to the organization and to our clinic. And we're really excited to have Mary uh, Holt Palone uh, back as our board liaison and back full time with our center. Uh, so thank you to our board and uh, the, the folks uh, in the clinic who are helping us and of course, Jamie and Sarah, our foundation leadership. And what about the ALS Hope Foundation? What is our mission? Um, and uh, well, it's really to provide long-term support to clinical centers of excellence, to support clinical and basic research programs that are directed at finding a cure and making life better, to support programs for people with ALS and their caregivers that, that really are going to optimize care, promote independence, and finally to promote education about the diagnosis, treatment and care, and to do this in a collaborative way. So we like to think of our pillars as care, education, and research. And I'm gonna go through some of the things that we're doing to meet, to meet these points, these bullet points of our mission. I really like to say that I'd like to abbreviate our mission to to just to make a difference to people living with ALS. That is really our goal. That is really what we want to do. And uh, to begin with, as I said, I'm going to underscore some of the bullet points. How do we support excellence in clinical care and uh, centers of excellence? Well, it's through the MDA ALS Center of Hope. And this is really a collaborative uh, effort between Temple Health, MDA, and of course, our center. And our center is composed of uh, neurologists, myself and Dr. Debu, the clinical coordinator and mental health specialist, Mary Holt Pallone, uh, case management, Latoya uh, Weaver, our speech language pathologist, Donna Harris. And let me take it aside. These folks have been with us 15, 20 years. I mean, uh, from the beginning. Um, Sarah Feldman probably has 25 years under her belt uh, working in the ALS Center. Mark Gorin, similarly. Dan, uh, 
Mergner is uh, back with us and he's our respiratory therapist, our super clinical research staff, Kathleen, Christine, and John, uh, and then our uh, administrative assistant, Amaris, uh, who just joined us, nutrition, uh, Michelle Conlin, and of course, we always have student researchers who sort of add some life to the clinic. It's always fun to have students around. They challenge us, and they're also just fun to be around. And so, again, uh, the neurologists, and here's some folks you, uh, you all recognize, um, Sarah, Mark, Donna, Amaris and, and Latoya, and then of course, uh, Mary uh, and uh, Michelle, Dan, Kathleen, Chris, and, and John Fury, really critical. And then our, uh, this shows you when we first joined forces, this was back in you know, 2000 when we became an MDA center. And this was a picture from 20, uh, 20 years ago. You can tell because you can see how much younger I am, but this is, uh, this is great. And you'll notice, look at the faces in that picture. You'll see that many of them are still in the clinic, 20 years. You, you can't, where can you go and get that kind of depth and quality of knowledge and, and experience, just pure experience. And the MDA Center of Hope, as I said, is a center of excellence. Not only does it house our multidisciplinary clinic, but our basic research lab. And while clinical care and education is the most important aspect that we do, that is really most important, taking good care of people with ALS. The multidisciplinary clinic is also the focal point for our educational programs, for clinical trials and for clinical research. The basic science lab uh, does uh, work in, in genetic modifiers and, and preclinical drug treatment, animal, animal work, trying new drugs, and houses our tissue and autopsy bank. And more specifically, as you can see, some of the specifics, what clinical research are we doing? Well, uh, we're looking at respiratory care, natural history of ALS, oxidative stress, uh, GI motility, and one of the things near and dear to my heart is leveraging technology and assistive technology in BCI. Uh, in terms of clinical trials, we'll go through them in a second. I have a whole list of them. And in the basic lab, uh, we'll also talk a little more about that uh, down the road. So here you can see a list of all the clinical trials we have going on, and there's always new trials. And also, not only do we do clinical trials, but it's important to do clinical research into biomarkers, tissue bank, the natural history. We're also, as I said, interested in respiratory uh, concerns. And we're starting to look at health outcomes and cost analysis for PALS, and also at healthcare disparities. These are all ongoing projects in collaboration with others in our university, as well as at other universities, at, uh, for instance, at, at Jefferson, and also our BCI program, where uh, we're, we're looking at developing brain-computer interfaces that are affordable and compact for, for folks. And that I'm working uh, alongside the Drexel uh, folks. And also there are uh, some uh, Jefferson and Temple folks interested in these projects. And in our uh, research lab, uh, I wanted to highlight the ALS Foundation Dr. Sinnott Research Lab. And, uh, this was made possible by a gift from the friends of Bob Sinat and uh, allowed us to establish the Robert Sinat Research Lab. And we want to thank the friends of Bob Sinat for that. And uh, you can see our research team, uh, which includes uh, Nicole uh, Cacavo, Bill Alexander, and John Fury, uh, standing by the thank you sign for when the Sinats actually, uh, the friends of Bob Sinat, uh, visited our lab to see what, what it meant to us uh, for them to support us. And this just shows you uh, Nicole, John, and, and Bill, and they are the core of our research team. And what are we doing in the lab? I already mentioned, we look at genes that modify ALS in mouse models. And we look at ALS mice, and we look at other motor neuron disorders in mice. We use the ALS mice to test new molecules. In fact, we're in the process of 
testing a, a new molecule right now. We maintain a tissue and autopsy bank uh, that can be uh, shared with other researchers. We're looking at biomarkers that may indicate the severity of ALS and also help us to stratify people. And uh, we're trying to translate some of our findings to people, especially the genetic disorders through the translational consortium. And of course, uh, this, this research uh, has been supported by the Carol Fox Kokenbach Fund, the Tom Corrigan Research Fund, Bowen Zolinda Laboudelier Fund, and the Robert Sinna Research Fund, and the Friends of Bob Sinna. And uh, the importance of genetic modifiers in ALS uh, help is, is important to understand because these modifiers provide insight into the mechanism of disease. They'll provide targets for us to, to aim treatments at. Uh, and maybe provide some predictive biomarkers, things that can tell us if somebody's going to have a, a more severe or milder disease, and provide a way to stratify people with ALS for clinical trials. So we find the clinical, the candidates in the mice, and we need to look at DNA from people as well to validate those markers in people with ALS to see if they're also modifying disease in ALS. And to do that, We've established what we call the translational modifier group. And uh, this includes people who are experts in mouse models, including our group, people at uh, Drexel, and people at the JAX Laboratory, Kat Lutz and Greg Cox, people who are experts in human genetics and have access to lots of uh, genomes from people living with ALS. And that includes the New York Genome Center, Kamali Fatnani. UMass, John Landers, the NIH, Brian Trainer, and, and also um, we, uh, we're working with uh, Dr. Harms, who's part of the New York Genome Center. And finally, lower animal models, people who can take our putative modifiers and test whether they modify disease in other models. So we have worms, flies, and zebrafish models and folks who are experts there. And uh, this group will be meeting again in the, in the coming year because we've now really narrowed some regions and have some additional information to share. And hopefully that will lead uh, to uh, real and tangible uh, progress in finding these modifiers in people. In addition, we uh, want to support programs that help people live with this disease and uh, are directed at independence and quality of life. And much of that is assistive technology. And this includes educating people about the newest things in assistive technology, things that make them more independent with activities of daily living. We actually jerry-rig, build and modify assistive devices with technology that's available now. And we've been working hard to develop the next generation of technology uh, the brain computer interface program. And in fact, this just shows you uh, what we've been working towards, which is an affordable home based brain computer interface uh, program for control that costs literally this uh, to put together is, is under $2,000. Um, and we're now trying to really uh, modify it and make it better. And here you can see how it works. And this shows you one of our our co-op students using an EEG headset called the Unicorn, a screen, which is basically an LCD computer screen on these dollar store glasses, which projects uh, targets that he can choose, a battery pack and a small computer called a Raspberry Pi. And here on the glasses, you can see lighting up the targets where he can choose what he wants to do, turn a fan on, a light, a TV, and he's chosen something. And we have about 80% accuracy using this system. And we, uh, this shows you how we acquire the brain signals to process and make choices. And uh, we're very excited about this. And here he selected the TV on. And we then uh, transmit that to a Google Home, which turns on, uh, turns on the uh, device. And so uh, we're getting these ready for uh, beta testing and upgrading and uh, hopefully we'll be able to produce these systems for PALS to use. 
we also are huge in collaborative efforts that that support education, support PALS uh, in various ways. And, and uh, we think that the collaboration is really key. So we are certainly an active member of the International Alliance of ALS MND. We support the Northeast Consortium, which educates healthcare professionals uh, about ALS and share information and research. Uh, we've been uh, helping Hope Loves Company and also the MDA. We've provided some educational programs through the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And we think these are really important. And then of course, we support collaboration for advocacy and Gary Curtis, uh, has been uh, extraordinary as an advocate representing the Alice Hope Foundation, working with multiple organizations like IMALS and Everything ALS and ALS One and all of the uh, all of the organizations that you can see that help petition for the ALS Act program, as well as uh, for pushing the FDA to to find ways to encourage companies to, to develop pharmaceutical agents and bring them to PALS. And while we're on education, we, we do both local and international education programs. Uh, we, uh, we've talked at the International Alliance through ALS Connect, providing a discussion of genetics. Uh, we, we've also uh, talked about care on a global level, uh, COVID-19, and about needs in ALS. And, and this has all been done through international forums uh, across borders, which we think is really important sharing uh, what we do with what, and learning about what other people do, very important. And uh, of course, we have run a, a caregiver support group uh, and educate pals through that. We educate, uh, we've educated PALS in Argentina at the MDA and through everything ALS, we've done programs where uh, uh, folks can view and, and learn more. And of course, we've had our Facebook Live series. Uh, we've done Neil's webinars, Northeast ALS Consortium uh, webinars on emergency preparedness. And up most uh, recently, we've done CR. And we will be doing another CRLI next week. Uh, this is a clinical research learning institute that educates people about ALS and how to become an advocate for ALS, specifically designed for PALS and caregivers and really anyone who's interested in, in advocating for ALS. We think that we need all, all the folks that we can get involved in talking about ALS. And certainly now that it's May is Awareness Month, perfect time for, for people to, to push on, on awareness and, and learning about ALS. And of course, we, we support education for pro professionals. As I mentioned, uh, this includes the Northeast ALS Consortium presenting our work at the meeting. Uh, and uh, we have uh, presented at uh, national uh, seminars at the Institute uh, Hermerson uh, Casado Brazil. I've talked about animal models and biomarkers uh, there. Uh, all of this is important. We, as I said, presenting our work at the International Alliance, uh, talking at the, North, the uh, MDA and uh, talking on uh, clinical trials and our perspective. So really getting out there and educating anyone who's interested. And that's basically Hope Educates. We will teach anyone who's interested about ALS, about what it means to live with ALS and uh, we invite folks to come to see our clinic, to see our lab and really get hands-on knowledge, not just reading about what ALS is. It's very different when you go and you meet someone living with ALS and really understand what the challenges are and what this disease truly means, not only to the person living with it, but the entire family. And I might add the extended family, which is, our clinic uh, team. So Hope Educates and we educate, we will go out to schools and educate students. We invite students to come in. 
We've educated all levels, high school students, college students, people out in the community. Uh, we, we encourage it. And, you know, how could we do all of this? Well, we, we couldn't do it without everyone who supports us, all of you out there. And that's why we feel it's so important to have our PALS advisory board telling us what's important to them and where we should be putting our efforts as, as well as telling you uh, on a yearly basis, what, what are we doing with, with what you've supplied? We've established all kinds of funds at the foundation that have really made a difference. We've talked about at the Robert Sinnott Research Lab Fund that, that really enables our lab research to continue. The Hope Bridges Fund is amazing. The Hope Bridges Fund is what enables us to offer our support groups, to offer home visits by a, a physical therapist to, to sort of help educate uh, you and look around your home and talk about some of the things you might need. We, we provide a one-time visit, our mental health support. And Hope Bridges has really been um, supported by the Gino Carousel Fund. We, we also have established a loaner closet that really is part of the Hope Bridges Fund, thanks to Gino Carousello Fund, but also uh, to the Pappas Fund. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Abington Township Police Fund has been amazing. Um, and, and they have enabled us to provide some equipment and, and some things to folks. And then of course we have some tried and true funds that have been around for a while. The, Neil and Sharon Bailick Fund, Tom Corrigan's Research Fund, Jeff Deach. I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about Jeff. Jeff, seen up here in the upper middle frame, is the co-founder of the ALS Hope Foundation. He was one of my best friends, my colleague in the lab, and Jeff passed away uh, about six, seven years ago now. Uh, and we remember Jeff with the Jeff Deach Travel Fund. Jeff thought it was really important to go and present at meetings and to travel abroad to the International Alliance and to make sure we were out there supporting in any way we can any efforts to help people with ALS. The Carol Fox Kokenbach Research Fund also probably one of our first funds ever. And this really was the kickoff for our genetic modifier work 20 years ago. This is what got us started. Bo and Linda Laboudelier, Harold B. Furman, these are all people who have made a huge difference. The Kevin O'Donnell Independent Living Initiative was really the start of our leveraging assistive technology and brain computer interface uh, work. Josh Patrick uh, Memorial Fund uh, also very important. Josh is probably the youngest person we ever cared for with ALS. And you can see him up here in the upper left. Uh, Josh was 17 when he died of ALS. And finally, the Joel Goldhirsch Education Fund. So these funds uh, are flexible uh, and, and each has a designation. And when people establish a fund, we have the ability to make sure that 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 fund is spent in the way that the donor wants uh, and thinks is important. And we have that flexibility and that's good. And as I said, one of our newest efforts uh, under the Hope Bridges is the Pappas Loan Closet made, made possible by the Pappas family. Uh, and the Pappases have uh, given us a warehouse space and uh, help in establishing the closet. And you can see here, we've got a number of power wheelchairs and small equipment and it's growing all the time. And, and we're now working on establishing a relationship uh, with the DME so that we can make sure that everything's in good running order. So thank you uh, to the Pappases. And all of this that we're talking about, we, we really owe it all to you out there who have supported us over the course of, of the year, uh, years, 20 years, but even since the last several years through COVID and all of the challenges everyone has had, uh, we, we still got lots of support. 
and also our volunteers. Um, it really takes a village and we, we really appreciate this. And up here, I want you to see the friends of Bob Sinat who have made such a big difference to our research uh, efforts. And of course, all of our uh, volunteers who, who just come out all the time and help us. So, you know, what, are, what now I'd like to highlight a little bit what we've done since 2019 when COVID hit, we have some, some things we got under the wire before COVID hit. And we've had a lot of virtual events. You're going to hear about them over the next six weeks as, as we uh, go out and, and we visit with people and personally thank them for, for their efforts through all of this. But we have our Run for Hope started by uh, Gary uh, Curtis and the Pearson Powerhouse and Sarah Pearson. And we had our Run for Hope in June of 2019. Uh, I think that was probably our, our first uh, and uh, it really was great. Um, we had our concert for hope in, in August at the Media Theater. They got in before COVID. And I'm really proud because that was put together by my daughter, uh, Elizabeth. And uh, that, that was really a wonderful concert and honored Stephen Senderoff, a composer who uh, was living with ALS. And of course we, have the Busby family. I, I don't even know what to say. They've done so much for us, Jack and his family. Uh, we had the Luau for Hope in August and during our virtual events, uh, Jack's son and his band has played for our, our events. And of course we had the firefighter Beef and Beer honoring Glenn Ellison in September. And then we had our, we managed to get in our Hope Walks in September of 2019 uh, and Barb Smith, Joe Carr uh, were our honorary leads and uh, Liz Cumming, our uh, volunteer extraordinaire who helped with that event. And then the Anoya family and Stickman Brews did Brews in Bags also in September. Meet the Geniuses uh, was uh, at the Ben Franklin Institute. It was an amazing event uh, put together by Molly and uh, Eric Elkman and Dan Gerson. And then November by the Abington Police Department who have consistently done events and our World Cafe Live in, in December. And we're getting close to COVID. We had our 50 and one bar crawl in January of 2020 with Wissahick and Brew Company. And then our final sort of live event before COVID struck was our gala. And that gala, uh, was uh, an amazing event. Uh, the Synods helped out again. And uh, Scott Davis was our uh, guest speaker living uh, with ALS at the time. And uh, that event was quite successful and carried us uh, through some of uh, COVID. And then COVID hit. And of course we had to have virtual events. We had our Auburn uh, Vineyards event, trivia night, ALS Shave Challenge and One Hope uh, Wine in May and June. So we kept, we kept things going and I thought it was important to have some virtual events simply to keep ALS out there, keep people remembering that ALS still needs to be solved. We still need to make a difference. And then we had a great virtual run walk in September, thanks to uh, Gary Curtis again and Liz Cummings. Marie and uh, Dave, David Bishop and uh, Mike Pearson all helping uh, with that. And of course, uh, the, uh, the orchestra uh, that I mentioned. And then we had our home concerts. Uh, again, my daughter putting together uh, with her opera company uh, home concerts in, in September. And uh, November, Abington Police again coming through the season of hope with Dan and Brianna Hare sharing their story. Our March of Faces with Dave uh, Bishop and uh, Dan Hare. All of these uh, events continued. And then in 2021, we had a brief interlude where we could be face to face. And so we were able to have our Run for Hope in June our November uh, in November, again by the Abington Police and the last waltz by Maria Caracella. And there were also hybrid events where you could do whatever you wanted, come, 
or join us in, in a virtual way. So our Hope Walks in September of this past year, 2021, honoring Ed Fosco and Stacy Lewin. And again, Liz Cummings coming through uh, as our uh, volunteer putting together our uh, raffle. Uh, the Busby family, uh, again, participating in March of Faces. Uh, and again, the season of hope with Stacy and Dan. So we, through it all, have had a lot of events, but one of the things that really has been sustaining and unbelievable to me has been our Facebook fundraisers. And I just want you to see how many Facebook fundraisers over the last three years we've had that have really been sustaining. And I'm not gonna read you every name, but I, I wanna, from my heart, thank everyone who's done a Facebook fundraiser. Just look at this, I have, three slides of people who have put together their Facebook fundraisers. Thank you all. What's, what's on the docket? What's coming up? Well, we have uh, Friday, May 13th and to Saturday, we're going to have our next Clinical Research Learning Institute. It will be virtual. If uh, anybody's interested, uh, we are fairly filled, but we can we can always squeeze someone else in. If you want to learn about ALS and you want to be an advocate, please let us know. Uh, we do two of these events pretty much yearly. Uh, hopefully the next one will be live, but this one was virtual uh, coming up. And if you want to join, just uh, get a hold of uh, Jamie or the foundation and uh, we'll see if we can't make it happen. We will be doing our run for hope in June on June 5th. Uh, at Norristown Farm Park, and that will be in person. Please sign up if you haven't uh, and want to come. Uh, we have our official, unofficial Lou Gehrig party, Lou Gehrig's Day party, Friday night, June 3rd. It's going to be at Xfinity Live. And you can come for any or all of it. There's a pregame party. There's a watch the game party. There'll be food and activities, and we, we welcome anybody who wants to join us just contact the foundation or Jamie and love to, love to have anybody uh, come who wants to. We have our chocolate meltdown September 23rd. We've had to move that. We had that scheduled uh, during COVID and had to cancel it, but it's gonna happen now on September 23rd. And we're uh, waiting for the schedule to come out uh, for football games, home games, and then we'll be able to announce when our Hope Walks will be hopefully at the uh, Temple Ambler campus. And remember that you don't have to write a check. You can support us simply by shopping Amazon Smile, doing a Facebook fundraiser. Uh, all of these are ways that you, you can not spend uh, any more money or write a check and, and help us out. And I just wanna thank everyone who's listening for helping us to keep hope on the horizon and remember, we, we need to continue to educate, advocate, and, and fight for ALS. ALS is May is ALS Awareness Month. Please continue to join us. And we'll be having other events throughout the course of the next six weeks through Global ALS Awareness Day. Thank you so much. <laughs>